welcome back today we will be talking about job strain index okay jsi it's a very useful tool when we are talking about any activity which is repetitive in nature and it is involved with your upper extremity so job strain index it's again a physical method it helps uh, you know helps the uh, researchers to understand the what is the impact of uh, you know uh, awkward posture then repetition forceful exertion and varieties of things which is associated with such activities and how we can quantify them so there are uh, you know we will take in uh, this tool uh, as the same way as we did for the earlier tools first we will introduce we will go for the procedure then we will take it uh, for an example and then definitely some advantages and disadvantages we will talk about fine so let us begin so this particular tool is being introduced by professor murey and garg in 1995 so you can understand it's not very old tool it's it's quite new uh, when actually this physical methods or physical activities were very prominent in industries right so right now if you take the incidences for after the industrial revolution most of the work is you know sedentary in nature and lot of cognitive aspects are need to be considered but at the initial stage of our ergonomics field evolution that time we lot of these researchers work for different kind of physical methods to identify or assess the load physical load on the human body while working definitely in these many cases these tools are context specific here like job strain index is also very much context specific so this particular strain index was proposed by professor murey and garg as a means to assess the job for risk of work related musculoskeletal disorder so only it evaluates so before we take this tool as a measurement procedure for in our research or in our research activities we should understand what it actually does it only actually evaluate the hand wrist and elbow so we talk about it distal upper extremity so from elbow to this finger okay so this only it is going to evaluate so if any job which is associated or which is connected to hand wrist and elbow which involves basically which involves the hand wrist and elbow like distal upper extremities you can use this tool to assess or evaluate the strain index for that particular job so it assess the task based on the posture frequency and force so uh, how does this particular tool uh, actually work it work based on the posture posture adapted by the person the frequency and the force it never considers the you know vibration contact stress or some other criteria or uh, other stressor stressors for the musculoskeletal disorders so only it considered the posture frequency and force not the vibration not the contact stress so it's a indexed based and it's a relative risk okay it's index based relative risk so let us go little more detail it can assess the right and left side independently as well as the worst courses so you are doing the analysis suppose both the hands are similarly working still if you want you can have right analysis separately left analysis separately or you can choose that which part you would like to analyze many cases as i mentioned for the rula and reba and all those cases that many cases what we do we take the dominant hand okay we take the dominant hand for our analysis that also you can do or you can do the both hand separately 
most of, um, like at the initial stage when this particular tool came into existence, they identified that meat packaging industry, small part assembly, keyboarding or any such activity which is similar to these, those cases this particular tool is very much useful. As I mentioned that you know it is only useful when your distal upper extremity is involved in that particular job. So, for those job which is requires rigorous involvement of uh, distal upper extremity for that cases for those cases you can use JSI or job strain index. Before we go into more detail, let us understand what are the factors involved in this particular uh, index calculation and what is the formula of it. So, first there are total 6 factors, okay, 6 element, index element. First is intensity of exertion, second duration of exertion that is percentage of cycle, efforts per minute hand wrist posture. So, it is not about whole body. When we are talking about distal upper extremity, mainly we will be talking about the hand wrist posture, speed of work and duration of task per day. While calculating the job strain index, we will come to know about one important terminology that is the multiplier. What is that? There are some constant factors which we will come to know when we will go in the more detail. So, each factor or each element that intensity of exertion that will get converted through, uh, through a pre-computed table into a multiplier through a rating from a rating to a multiplier. Okay. And once we multiply all these multiplier, all these six multipliers, we will get the score that is the index okay job strain index or we call it JSI score. Then we will com uh, compare that particular JSI score with the uh, with the level as it is an index so there will be some level so that uh, we will compare and we will say the job is hazardous or risky or is it going to have an impact in future on the musculoskeletal system or not. So, assign a value for each of these element that is the mandatory portion we will do how we can assign them multiply each element then we will get the uh, index and compare the calculated value with the decision threshold point. So, if we get a value less than 3 we will say it is safe the work is safe. If it is 3 to 5 then it is uncertain maybe there is some unsafe activities are present. So, you need to go for some kind of intervention or more investigation. 5 to 7 it is somewhat risks available it is confirming yes there is there are some risks and more than 7 it is confirming yes it is very much hazardous. So, you need to look into the job look into the uh, construction look into the um, procedure and you need to uh, do some kind of intervention. Okay. So, this is the scale that you will be using. So, at the end whenever you are getting the JSI score by multiplying all these multipliers. Okay. So, this particular JSI score you will be comparing with this value. If it is less than 3 then it is safe 3 to 5 uncertain. 5 to 7 somewhat risk and more than 7 it is hazardous. Now, let us begin how can we understand and how can we score these 6 elements. First, we will go for intensity of exertion. So, intensity of exertion we can do the rating in 4 varieties in four different way okay for in four different way we can do the rating for intensity of 
exertion. So, this is the rating you have 5 points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 these are the 5 point scale. So, 5 ratings you can do. Now, how do we do? Either you can have a 5 point rating scale in where 1 means light the intensity of exertion that is perceived by the person who is working over there is feeling light. 2 means somewhat hard, 3 hard, 4 very hard and 5 depicts near maximal. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right. So, this way you can have a 5 point Likert scale and you can you can use that. If this particular method is not useful for your scale then you can go for some other uh, way to rate the intensity of exertion. The next way is you need to calculate the percentage of maximum strength used by your upper distal upper extremity. How do you do that? So, you can calculate your maximum voluntary contraction while in, in the posture of the particular work is being done and then you can uh, have data you know from maybe uh, different method you can use and you can calculate the what is the percentage of maximum maximum strength is being used in while doing this particular job. So, suppose you are tightening some screw okay, in, in, in a particular job and you are trying to identify the intensity of exertion of that particular job. So, what we will do in that particular activity, in that particular posture, in that particular manner, what is the maximum possible voluntary strength can be generated of those group of muscle. First, you measure that and you measure the, uh, the working strength. Okay. Then you calculate what is the percentage is being used of maximum voluntary contraction while doing that particular job. So, once you have the data, then you say if it is less than 10 percent, then it is 1, 10 to 29 percent, then it is 2, 30 to 49 percent, it is 3, 50 to 79 percent, 4, more than 79 percent, it is 5. So, this is another way. If it is also not possible for you to do, then you can use Borg's CR10 scale to get an understanding what is the intensity of exertion in that particular job. So, you know how the CR10 scale looks like, I explained it earlier. In that, if any value which is less than 2, it is 1. If between 2 to 4, it is 2, 4 to 6, it is 3, then 7, 8, it is you know, 4 and more than 8 that is 10 and above near to those location, it is 5. Okay. So, that way you can have intensity of exertion using your Borg CR10 scale. The next way of doing is how the person is perceiving that particular intensity of exertion. So, this is more of the answer from the subject. Okay. So, how the person is perceiving it? So, if he, if he or she is perceiving barely noticeable, he cannot perceive. So, it is very light. Okay. So, for that cases, it is one noticeable or defi uh, definite effort, then two obvious effort or unchanged facial expression. So, it is connected to, so if, if, if you need lot of effort to do, of course, your faces will, you know, facial muscles will work, right. So, if you are doing some very tough job with your, uh, these muscles, automatically your facial uh, muscles will react. So, uh, uh, if unchanged facial uh, expression, but 
you can see the effort is there then it is 3 sustain uh, substantial effort and changes the facial expression of uh, then definitely it is more than that then it is 4 and use shoulder or trunk to generate force. So, it is not only happening with your uh, distal upper extremity you are taking effort from your shoulder and trunk muscle. So, lot of activities are happening. So, you know you, you can see the posture is changing. So, those cases you can give uh, a rating of 5. So, this is how we get the rating of intensity of exertion correct this is first uh, first element of jsi this is first element of jsi moving to next element that is the duration of exertion how do we calculate it the calculation is percentage of duration of exertion is equal to effort duration per cycle time multiplied by 100. So, in a whole thing that particular effort is taking how long divided by the whole cycle time ok multiplied by 100. So, if a particular job in a particular movement or particular task that particular effort is taking 3 seconds time and the whole cycle time is 10 then it is 3 divided by 10 multiplied by 100 fine. So, this way you can do the calculation of percentage duration of exertion. So, here you can see the value is 30, 30 means we are here correct. So, here also you can have a rating if it is less than 10 percentage then it is 1, 10 to 29, 2, 30 to 49, 3, 50 to 79, 4 and more than uh, equal to or more than 80 then it is 5. So, we can have the rating of duration of exertion. Good. Let us move to the third element third element is efforts per minute the earlier element was for that particular effort how long you are taking in the whole cycle now we are going to cut calculate in a minute how many time we are producing that or we are doing that particular effort ok. So, efforts per minute is equal to number of exertion per cycle divided by cycle time everything you need to calculate per minute. So, if the number of efforts per minute is less than 4 then rating is 1, 4 to 8 rating is 2, 9 to 14 rating is 3, 15 to 19 rating is 4 more than 20 rating is 5 very clear. So, till now we completed 3 elements. Now, let us go to the next element. Next element is hand wrist posture. So, here it is we are talking about a distal upper extremity right. So, whatever we are doing with our wrist uh, hand wrist and using elbow. So, now we will be talking about hand wrist posture. There are again 5 ways that uh, we can give the rating you can use any one of them you need not to go for all you can take any one of them ok. First one is rating criteria like in a 5 point uh, scale you can ask the person or you can you can rate yourself that if it is very good 1 good 2 fair 3 bad 4 very bad 5 right or you can have angular measurement of deviation what this is extension flexion and ulnar deviation this also you can measure. So, suppose you are working in this particular posture so you can measure the degree right at what degree it is being ex uh, in extension. 
it is in flexion it is deviated right so any one you can choose you can see the degrees accordingly it is mentioned what is the uh, rating so for uh, wrist extension wrist flexion and ulna deviation now it may happen along with extension and flexion some ulna deviation is present in that case you may ask a question that which value you should take here as it is a risk assessment tool you should always go for the higher value for example suppose in a particular wrist posture your wrist is flexed at 16 to 15 degree along with 16 to 20 degree devi ulnar deviation okay so if you take only flexion the rating is 2 if you take only ulnar deviation it is 3 okay as both things are present you should go for rating of 3 not 2 why if you take the rating of 3 then you are going to cover maximum possible risk present in that particular activity so that is why you always need to go for the higher value now this way you can collect so here maybe you can uh, do photographic method or you can use goniometer uh, or any other method where you can measure the wrist posture also here you can use your perceived posture how you are perceiving that posture so if it you feel that it is perfect to neutral then one near neutral two non neutral three marked deviation four and near extreme the deviation is near extreme then it is five so these are the way how do you define your hand wrist posture for job strain index okay so you almost covered four elements now let's move to the next element that is the speed of work again here we can do the rating in two varieties two two ways okay five point scale very slow one slow two fair three fast four very fast five fine so that you can do or you can give a perceived rating extremely relaxed pace so there is no hurry no slowly the person is working there is no 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 pace it's very relaxed taking one's own time it's not it's not that very relaxed but yes he or she is completing the task on its own time but it is doing it's not that it's not happening it's very very slow it's doing on time okay normal speed of motion rushed but able to keep it up okay doing very hurry bari but it's not that something is missing up it's doing but you can see the speed and rushed and barely or unable to keep up the speed so then it is fine so this this is perceived okay now this always comes with experience it's not that at the very beginning once you start collecting data you will be able to understand the discrimination between uh, one and two then three uh, four and five this is very difficult to understand so based on your experience based on your skill you will develop it so always here we suggest to have two three four number of observer so that you know based observation can pick it up pick it up so if one observation is very different from other two and three you can again redo the task okay so this is always uh, uh, like for the learner like you know for the person who is doing these things uh, very first time or maybe at the very beginning of their research life they they take their peers help to collect these data not only for speed of work for all other elements okay or 
you once you have the video recording of the job you do it at laboratory for many times and you cross check okay that what you did earlier and what you do now is matching or not so biasness elimination of biasness so those things it you will practice and then it will go off and you will have more accurate data okay so this is speed of work moving to next that is the duration of task per day this is very specific that how long they are doing the job doing that particular task or if it is less than one you you can get this from their work schedule right so it's less than one then one one to two 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 to four three four to eight four and more than eight hours everything is in hours okay so more than eight hours then it is five now you understood all the six elements of job strain index right now what we did till now we just did the uh, rating of each element now here we have to convert them into multiplier so there is some pre computed table so this is how it looks like if you combine all the things now this is how the multipliers look like this is the table where all the elements are placed along with the rating now this is how the multipliers look like based on the rating okay so these all are multipliers of intensity of exertion these are for duration of exertion and so on now right now just take one small example suppose i am picking these values maybe from my experiment these values are coming so uh, intensity of exertion is one duration of exertion is one efforts per minute is 0.5 uh, maybe hand it posture is uh, like 1.5 uh, maybe speed of work is 1.5 and uh, duration per day is 0.7 so what is your jsi jsi is 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 0.5 1.5 1.5 multiplied by 0 0.75 so calculate the value this will be your jsi score fine clear now let's take an specific example and then we will show how do we interpret the result so i am explaining a scenario an operator first let me read it out then we will take it further so an operator in a manufacturing industries batch production system must assemble a component so job is you know in a batch production system they have to assemble some component one of the task is to align two components which are weighing around 5 kg in total which takes around 10 minutes when performed at a comfortable slow pace. So here you are getting an understanding how things are being described. The operator performs the task at a comfortable pace with good hand and wrist posture. So this is the definition of the scenario or description of the scenario. Now from this scenario what we try to do this is just an example okay you can have your own example and you can calculate so what we did we rated everything okay so this is two this is one this is three this is two this is two and this again three so accordingly we got these multipliers from this pre-computed table from this pre-computed table we got all these multipliers and then once we multiply we got this value as 1.68 1.68 is your jsi score 
Now, what do we do with this? Yes, let us move forward again this value. So, 1.68 of course, it is less than 3. So, the particular task or particular job which is uh, we are actually analyzing is safe. If by chance that particular JSI score suppose for a particular activity is 6.2 for, for a case then it is here. So, that means there is some risk. There is some risk in that particular job. So, what we supposed to do? We supposed to inquire back that why this particular score became high and how do we do that? We look at the individual value, all the six values are there, right? So, we look at each individual value and check which value is causing the higher value of the total score that JSI score and if we see yes, there are some uh, score which is actually causing the higher value of the JSI, then we through intervention, we try to modify it. And once we modify, again we cross check that is it reduced or not. If it is reduced, then yes, your intervention is successful. If it is not reduced, uh, is same, then your intervention is not successful. So, you need to rework on it. So, this is how we use job strain index and using job strain index, this is how we go for the intervention. Now, let us talk about advantage and disadvantage. So, advantage if we talk about this particular tool is like you know you get six elements in a particular job and you, you see how these six elements are connected to develop or uh, know how these elements are useful or influencing the development of musculoskeletal disorder. So, very easily you can you can have some idea that where your intervention can start. This is one. Second is it is very easy method. Uh, maybe after one or two training, uh, any person can adopt this particular method and they can do the data collection as well as analysis. It, it does not take lot of instrument, maybe a simple video recorder and pen and paper uh, you can use, uh, you can collect data and you can have the analysis. So, very, very useful. However, there are some disadvantages, there are some limitations. So, what are those limitations? Limitations are it talks about only those cases where distal upper extremity is involved. If any job which requires whole body involvement, this particular tool will not be able to assess the risk factors connected to musculoskeletal disorder. So, only for distal upper extremity uh, for those cases only this tool is useful. So, this is the limitation of this particular tool. This is quite a reliable tool. So, I suggest if anyone is working in a, uh, a with any some occupation where distal upper extremity is involved to do some kind of assembly job, repetitive job, then you can use this tool, you can uh, implement this tool and you can assess the risk factors to, which is you know related to uh, musculoskeletal disorder. That is all for today. So, if you have some uh, questions, you can put it in discussion box and you can practice it and while doing or uh, while practicing if you have some difficulties that also you can inquire back. Thank you. Mm -hmm.